I'm here outside with Dane Fulton, who gives us his thoughts on the story. Dane, how do you feel about it? While so many students are worried about finding a job after graduation, one specific student already has a plan. Check out Nathan Graham's story. I think it is very important, especially since it's so hard to get a job nowadays. Yeah. You need to be very well-rounded. The first time in 25 years, cigarette labels are getting a makeover. Hello, I'm your host, Kyra Robinson, and welcome to Talk Avenue, where we bring you the hottest, most recent entertainment news. And what better way to start the show than with a little bit of Hollywood drama? Kyra Robinson is in the Columbia Chronicle newsroom with more. Thank you guys for joining me inside of the Columbia Chronicle with our very informative editor-in-chief, Spencer Rausch, who is going to give us this week's top headlines. Spencer, what could we expect to see in the news this week? Uh, well, the first story I'm going to talk about is in our metro section, and it's about ex-offenders leaving prison not being able to find jobs easily. Wow, so I know they can't find jobs because they have a record so nobody wants to hire them. But the important thing is, is the government doing anything about this? It's very interesting, the correlation between politics and entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, Wyclef John running for president of Haiti, and then you have Arnold Schwarzenegger, governor of California. It's a very interesting connection. Vanessa Hudgens turns 22 today, but her birthday activities will not include one person. Can you guess who? All right, all right, I'll tell you, Zach. Efron. The Disney superstars called it quits after a four-year-long relationship. Vanessa was quoted saying, it was hard dating such a good-looking guy because it put a strain on the relationship, end quote. Sources say there was no sign of cheating or third parties. I guess that's why they call it high school sweethearts, huh? <laughs> well, good thing is the ex-couple is still on friendly terms. Never partied with the dead before? Discover how a famous festival evolved from the Aztec culture to a modern celebration of food and fun. Sending a text message or email is convenient, but it may not be as beneficial as you think. One Columbia College student feels like technology is an addiction which keeps her away from using her verbal communication skills. I feel like I have an impulse to check my phone every five minutes, even though I know no one's calling or texting. And then when I do check if someone has called, sometimes I don't even call them back, I just text because talking is too difficult for me. Talking with someone is difficult because conversations can't be controlled, unlike text messages and emails. Media relations specialist Stephanie Morris says the addiction to modern technology makes her feel disconnected. I'm just used to it. We all just are on our cell phones. Like you can find us just kind of sitting there in silence sometimes, just on our phone. It's kind of weird, but I guess it's kind of like what it's evolved to at this point. The evolution has hindered many people from developing their interpersonal skills. As in the past 10 years, the number of internet users have increased nearly 1,300 million, and cell phone users are up 4.6 billion. That's where technology has gone, where we cannot live without it. I personally can say that I cannot live with, without a computer or my phone. But what happened to writing long love letters and actually sitting down to have a heartfelt conversation? Stephanie says in public relations, it's difficult to form real relationships without being face to face. Like I'll send a quick email really fast, whereas I won't necessarily call first. So I'm starting to break that cycle and start making phone calls and actually, you know, put a voice to the name. So telling you love somebody over a text message is not the same and will never be the same as telling somebody in person. But with the growing number of technological devices, communication may never be the same. I'm Kyra Robinson reporting, Columbia College, Chicago. Camera speed. Sound speed. And director and producer Simeon Henderson explains why reality shows are just not real. Is it reality if you have to do it over again? Is it reality if they have to say cut, take two? That's not reality. Reality is straightforward in your face right now. Professor and producer David Jude Green gives us the 411 on why reality shows like American Idol fall in the same category of fakeness. You know, every game show that you see on TV, whether or not they say is chosen by the audience or by you, the viewer, it's really not true. They have a whole production team that decides who's really going to make it halfway through. The one real aspect of reality television is definitely the viewership. For example, Keeping Up with the Kardashians brings in nearly 4.7 million viewers per week, which is a 13% increase from last season. We're Americans, and we love scandal and sex and anytime something bad happens to someone. Um, 
And that sounds terrible, but it's fact. It drives numbers and drives ratings. Faithful viewer Dominique Winston says she watches Keeping Up with the Kardashians for one simple reason. It's an image. I think it's an image. I think because, like I said, who they are and what they have and how they look and people want to look as good as them. Whether it's scandal, drama, or fashion, the one true thing about reality shows is the viewership. As long as people watch it and talk about it, it will keep it being real because people want to believe it. I'm Kyra Robinson reporting Metro Minutes. Congratulations are in order for Tina Fey, who has been awarded the Kennedy Center 2010 Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. 40-year-old Fey is the youngest American ever to receive the nation's award for top comic. She's only the third woman to win after Lily Tomlin and Whoopi Goldberg. The funny woman said she won because she assumed Betty White was disqualified due to steroid use. <laughs> Tina Fey is hilarious and I think she's well deserving of this award. Absolutely. She's brought much laughter into all of our homes. I would definitely agree. This is Samira DeBecca. And I'm Kyra Robinson. Thanks for joining us on Metro Minutes.